It was a deal meant to tick off China and worry China, but all of a sudden that security agreement between the United States and the United Kingdom and, of course, Australia now has the French upset. It's a little bit convoluted here. They're the odd men out on this, thinking that they would be part of this, so none too happy. In fact, so unhappy that they've gone ahead and recalled their ambassadors to uh, the U.S. and Australia over all of this. Uh, to my colleague and friend Brett Baer, express a special report on just 90 minutes from now. Brett, what do you make of this? Neil, it's actually a big deal uh, diplomatically for an ally like France to pull their ambassador, uh, Philippe Etienne, uh, back to Paris uh, from from the U.S. That is just shows how really angry they are about this deal coming together and that they were blindsided by it. Just to frame it a little bit, um, this is a deal about nuclear submarines with the U.S., Australia, the U.K., and you're right to say that it's meant to kind of put the pressure on China in that uh, neck of the woods. However, to do that, Australia ripped up a deal to do French nuclear submarines for the tune of $90 billion. And um, the French didn't see it coming, and they are really blaming the Biden administration for not keeping them in the loop. You know, um, you don't want to you know, draw different incidents together. But there is a bit of a commonality here, Brett, if you think about it, the way this whole, you know, China thing was, was, was orchestrated and communicated, and how the confusion with the FDA that apparently was caught off guard by the president's recommendations on, on getting a booster shot, uh, even if you want to include Afghanistan and mixed readings about whether this had been thoroughly vetted among all the president's military uh, commanders and top defense folks. And I'm just wondering if that pattern, you know, is, is worrisome there, that communication, communication, communication. Well, listen, I think his critics, the presidents on Capitol Hill, say it fits into this broader narrative of competency and how this administration is dealing with all kinds of different things at the same time. This drone strike in Afghanistan, you know, they took this as... Uh, a pushback on the criticism they were getting for the Afghanistan withdrawal. If you remember Jen Psaki coming out saying, well, we have done this over the horizon uh, attack and taken out ISIS fighters, the Pentagon coming out saying there were extra explosions from the car, meaning they had explosives in there that could threaten U.S. troops. Um, and it turns out that they were civilians, an aid worker and seven children uh, in that drone strike. This is a really bad week for the Biden administration, Neil. It's, there's no doubt about it. This booster back and forth with the FDA advisory committee, by the way, they, they did vote unanimously to, uh, to advise uh, boosters for 65 and over and those who are right. uh, compromised, but, uh, but they didn't on the, on the younger people. And that was you know, kind of all botched up as far as communication goes. And then the Afghanistan part about listening to advisors, it's becoming more clear the President Biden did what he did, made those decisions over and above and outside of what his advisors were telling him. I'm just wondering what the implications are of that, As especially if you're at any agency and all, let's say another decision comes up um, and you wonder if the president or his people are going to vet you and your thoughts on something. It's, it's, it's quite common. Obviously, presidents will you know, decide against the advice they're given sometimes from top military, medical advisors. I, I, I get that. But oftentimes it, it, it's never even sought out in the first place here. And that is a little different. Joe Biden is unique. He has 50 plus years of Washington experience uh, and on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee uh, as vice president. And he has his own thoughts about things that have come out over the years. One of those was that sometimes he has expressed publicly that he felt the military was dragging administrations along, including the Obama administration, and that something needed to happen firm. It may be that we find out that President Biden decided this on his own uh, outside of all of the advice that he was given. We'll see over time. Um, and I think a lot of that will come out in this hearing uh, that we'll get on September 28th with uh, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, Mark Milley and others. Uh, I just think overall, this is not a great week. Um, the drone strike aside, there's protecting U.S. forces. There's all kinds of things that happen in war. But it adds to this narrative, uh, and I usually hate that word, but it is this week, a narrative yeah. uh, that his, his uh, opponents are jumping on.
Yeah, this was supposed to be the week of the pivot, and he pivoted into even more hot water. Um, Brett, thank you very much, my friend. Look forward to seeing you uh, in about 90 minutes.